Hey everybody, so I just wanted to, one, thank you all who have subscribed to the channel, liked the videos, watched the videos. Uh, if you're watching this, please be sure, because I forget to even ask sometimes, <laughs> to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers uh, by the end of September. Um, so, you know, just help me out a little bit. I'm almost there. All right, so we're back for... <laughs> I did end up watching it. Love during lockup. Are you his auntie? Season four, episode eight. So speaking on the culture of stupidity, which I addressed in my last video, okay, and that was important to me because there are some dummies in the world. I wouldn't even think about these people, but shit. All right, so Chris and Jay, we'll just go ahead and just get them out of the way because they didn't. They didn't really give us much. Apparently, he's not getting out till twenty twenty four, at the soonest. So, um, right. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Jay was like, she says that she's realizing there are some cracks in the foundation, and maybe she's being super naive. I was like, um, did your sister help you out with that one? Because you've been married to him for a minute now. So, um, what the fuck? Sometimes people just got to be in situations where they just look dumb as fuck. All right, like, duh, bitch. Next time you have a problem like this, Jay, just go on TikTok from now on and uh, tell people about your relationship. Like just in like little videos and then read the comments and trust me those comments in your case that will let you know where you need to go with that relationship and it'll probably be to some self-care and some um self-evolution some self-analysis just just by yourself okay because you are not well all right so she said you know um chris is very clear he doesn't want her to work or have a job and she wants the damn paperwork for the house and shit like that notarized. This is my opinion. My opinion. I am not a big believer. And granted, I know everybody's situation is different. I'm telling you my opinion. I do not like men that insist that women do not work. Because to me, those kind of men have every intention to control you. It's been too many examples in life, <laughs> okay, that those kind of men, that is what they care to do and to keep you from achieving certain things. Now, that being said, how the fuck is somebody in jail going to insist you don't have a job? Because they in fucking jail. Like, how the fuck does that work? Like, how does, how does somebody get your mind that wrapped up from jail? I'm not talking about somebody you met on the street and you were just smitten somebody from jail huh girl bye anyway so he was like are you serious just because your name is not on it you want to step notarized and i was like yeah fucker okay it means everything <laughs> it means more to your marriage certificate there's money in a house okay there's equity in a house it ain't money in a marriage certificate okay except for that 30 dollars you spent on it so and she was like um well, you threaten to kick me out every time we have fights. And he was like, well, people say stuff like that during fights. I was like, uh-uh. There is such a thing as fighting fair. And when I say fighting fair in a relationship, there are things that just should not happen. There need to be boundaries and barriers. Because if you threaten that, that kind of stuff, like somebody's homelessness, that's some bullshit. That's really been going through your head. It's like I, a man can't call me a bitch. Or a hoe. And we're in a relationship? No, that, that relationship ended when you did that. Because I don't know how far at that point you're willing to go. Because men who call women out of their name, as far as I'm concerned, that's always the tip of the iceberg. That has a lot to do with their resentment for women, so on and so forth. But I digress. So, and she was like, um, so Chris and Jade are talking about a divorce on speakerphone at the beach. If I was at that beach, I would have walked up to you and bopped you in the back of your head with, with a heavy cooler full of sodas. Just because that kind of shit is fucking nerve-wracking. People go to the beach to relax. You out there screaming on speakerphone about a divorce. And people got their picnic umbrellas and stuff up. People don't want to move that shit. Anyway, so um, Chris was like, I don't know what I've done to make you think I'm not loyal and won't take care of you. I was like, didn't she just say? You threaten to take the house when y'all fight. And then he, he lies and tells her he's going to put her name on the paperwork. 
Jay, look, let me tell you something. I know day to days ain't for everybody. Uh, if we being truthful, they ain't really for most people. But we get up every morning and we do it. Some people even work the graveyard shift. But you do what you got to do to take care of yourself. Okay? So I'm going to need you to get over that. Andy and Brittany, they have got to be the most boring, underwhelming couple. They haven't given us anything to work with. How did they get chosen? The best part of Andy and Brittany's storyline was when them two sisters was living together and got in his ass. <laughs> anyway, so they're talking about, he's talking to Brittany on a jail call. And they're talking about the countdown for her to get out. And is it me or it just seems like even over the phone, and granted, I know y'all probably like, well, everybody's on the phone. But there just doesn't seem to be like any chemistry, like more than usual. Like you really can't tell that through a phone call. But it sounds like he's almost talking to his daughter and not just because of the age gap, like almost like she's like a daddy's girl, right? And like she's a daddy's girl who got in trouble and he's gonna be there for her no matter what because he loves her. He doesn't talk to her to me like a lover. Like it's just weird. So then he has his 17 year old son, Barry, bless his heart. Um, around to go and pick Brittany up with him. Have your kids not suffered enough trauma, sir? Because you could talk about their mother being a drug addict all day. Yes. And that's painful. But you as the sober parent, I'm going to need you to fucking do better. I don't give a fuck if he's 17, about to be grown. It doesn't matter. You got a lot of shit to make up for. Anyway, the son was like, so do you think it's smart to give a drug addict $1,200? Now, if Barry can tell us that and you can't, something is really wrong, especially for a girl you ain't never fucked, all right? And then he starts making excuses. I don't even feel like going through it. So the brother did, though, with me. <laughs> what me and my siblings have done more than a little bit, okay? So if there's some bullshit going down, we were literally in the same house, who's at, wherever we at, go in the other room, call one of the others to gossip about it. I know we ain't shit sometimes. Okay, but, but sometimes we are right too. Okay, sometimes you just gotta let everybody know what's happening. So anyway, the sister was like, watch her and call her if anything, call me if anything goes. <laughs> I don't blame them. I don't blame them. They looking out for their father more than they father look out for them. And that's probably one of the worst things to have to do is to be a child that has to raise your parents. And it's more than some of us. Anyway. So Barry looks like he can't hold water. He just gives me that vibe. Um, and he's going to spill the beans. He's going to tell her everything. She ain't got to worry about that. Then Andy shows up to the prison with a bunch of party balloons. Um, and she's getting out on the day of her son's birthday. And that's a big deal for him. Him and his son are talking about it. And his son is nice about it. Like he's not saying anything disrespectful or anything. But I'm just like, a piece of him has to kind of feel like, would he do this for me? Just on a day-to-day, -day, would, would my father actually do this for me? I mean, it just, I don't know. Uh, mm, anyway, so Brittany's daughter was polite enough, um, you know, as polite as it can be for Andy. She wasn't talking shit about him, and she's waiting at the hotel. I honestly, something about that girl, I feel bad for her. Her mother's in jail. She practically takes care of all her siblings. She seems alone, not so much, I mean, clearly she has other siblings, but I mean, she seems like she's under an immense amount of pressure. And for her mother to be coming out of jail with a man she doesn't know has to be another gut punch to a young girl at 18, technically an adult, whatever. A young girl at 18, and it just seems like she's being replaced over and over again, whether it's jail, whether it's drugs, whether it's Andy. And that's not a good feeling. It can't be a good feeling. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to get these over with real quick. Brittany and Kieran, the, she finishes fighting with EB, sorry ass. I'm so, uh, please don't bring EB, but I know they will. I know they will. So the way Brittany rushes to do those visits with Kira makes me feel like she is in an abusive relationship. Okay, she sounds and seems very scared to miss anything because he's going to get mad, he's going to get angry. Those are not good signs. And she's a young girl. She's, I mean, a very, very young woman. She's so very young. And she tells him about EB and asks, like, are you sending him to stalk me? I was like, girl, you, you need to go into details. Like, this motherfucker is waiting outside for you out the apartment and following you all day and don't have no job. Like, what the fuck? So he was like, no, uh, EB just wants the best for me. My brother just wants the best for me. 
Brittany was basically like, well, when Carla lied, I decided not to ask anybody else or other people about you. Okay. She respected a boundary. So, Kirik, you need to fucking respect boundaries, too. She asked him, did he ever ask Carla why she lied? He said, no. You mean to tell me if somebody lied on you like that to where you and your girl fall out and y'all damn near sharing a cell, you and Carla damn near sharing a cell, you never thought to mention it to her that she lied about you getting into a fight? What'd I tell y'all? What'd I tell y'all? Don't worry about that. It's New York. All right. Um, I said that girl wasn't lying. I hope they're okay, whoever they are. Um, I said that girl wasn't lying. He got ahead of it. Kira got ahead of it and told EB um, to say Carla makes up stuff, this, that, and the other. And the way Carla described that fight, I still feel like Kira got his ass whooped and he embarrassed. Okay, so Kirk, you ain't fooling me. Um, anyway, so then we get Brittany is going to freeze her eggs. And I was like, why the fuck is she freezing her eggs at like 22? Uh, you know, she has one fallopian tube, so that might be, you know, a boundary in carrying the child. And I, I didn't realize that. Um, but apparently, they want to use his eggs. Um, and Brittany it said she can carry it, so it feels like it's his kid. You know, that kind of thing. She really wants to do that. In order to use his eggs, he has to come off of the testosterone. And it will hyperfeminize him. I mean, the doctor was very clear, very patient. Um, and Kirik's not okay with that. I'm, you know, okay. Um, but some of y'all didn't pay attention in biology. Uh, specifically, I'm talking to Brittany and Kirik. Did you really think you could be on testosterone and preserve your egg? Like, first of all, first of all, they're too young. They're too emotionally unstable financially unstable and immature to be getting married and certainly bringing children into this. This is one of those explosive relationships that is bound to explode in dynamite. And it's unfortunate that we're going to have a camera to watch it. Cause I feel like this is going to end up more sad than like just funny, like bullshit. Like, you know, I watch this to like joke around. I don't watch it, to, you know, watch nobody get, you know, fucked up, fucked up. So, um, you can tell both of them are very broken people. They're unhealed and honestly they trauma bonded. Um, please don't have any kids. That's not fair to them. It's not. And y'all aren't ready. All right. So I feel bad that she was crying, but Brittany, this isn't a good relationship, honey. All right. She wants me to carry his child. He's unwilling to do it. It is what it is. Savannah. Savannah. You know what? I'm just going, it ought to be illegal for somebody to be this goddamn stupid. And I'm really trying my best not to even keep stupid in my vocabulary during the school year. Because I don't like to, you know, use that word a lot. But, and mean it. Like, I don't call something stupid, it's a joke. To really mean it, Savannah, you are too slow for me. Okay? So she was like, today is the day I may be getting married. Now, I heard of people expecting an engagement. But bitch, showing up to the jailhouse with a wedding dress for somebody that doesn't even want to commit to you once they're out of prison and said that? is crazy he doesn't even care in, he didn't even care enough in those in that moment or in other moments to lie to you he has told her he doesn't care about getting out of prison i said bitch you should have hung up that phone when he said that <laughs> this ain't got to be my problem i'm free sorry so why do you love this motherfucker you keep talking about you love him maybe she just wants a boyfriend while she screws other guys like it just seems like that to me because clearly she didn't told us all her business okay or maybe she just wants to be on TV because we did see her performing at the local theater, okay? And I'm sure in Iowa City, that's not hitting on much. So anyway, then she goes to the jail with the marriage paperwork. <laughs> Savannah, you bold. I got to get that much to you. You bold, okay? And he laughed and said no. Then this bitch has a nerve to look at us in the camera and say, but we had a great visit afterwards. But she was in the car crying about the visit. Like, I, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about crazy, okay? She off. She off. Savannah, honey, you are just, you are, a, I'm glad we didn't see your family on the show. And I see why they didn't show up for you. And it's, it's because of this. All right? Um, she's like, I didn't listen. And I didn't get what I wanted. 
And I was like, okay. And was it just me or, and then Jake calls. Is it just me or does Jake sound like a creeper? I don't know why I didn't catch this before. He was like, hey, lover. Like, I mean, like a serial killer. That's how he sounded. So Jake is breadcrumbing. That's what I've also come to the conclusion of too. He's telling her one thing at one point, like, oh, I can't believe you would come in a wedding dress and you would put yourself all out there for me, even though I totally basically rejected you and said I didn't want you. And then telling her, you know, I love you and I want to get married. He's breadcrumbing and... I'm sure he's done this more than we see through the television and what you're doing is messed up and you know it's messed up uh, and now she is crazy but he does lead her on but the bitch is delusional she needs to go back and apologize to her friend for fucking up her wedding fitting no I ain't forgot that because that, that was a selfish ass move here's another underwhelming ending but Letitia and Keith first of all he don't even get out till 2025 why did I think never mind I thought he got out sooner than that. Yeah, he's going to have plenty of time to get over that $15,000 ring. So Letitia comes back from the club looking like she just got off uh, at the 30-plus uh, amateur hour at Magic City. So Aunt Marsha is clearly um, too involved in her nephew's business for, for my taste. I mean, just a little too involved. It's a little unhealthy for me. Um, like, did she raise him? Did I miss that part? Why is she so involved in these different aspects of his personal life? Because even when they were joking about somebody being a boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, when the friend had dated him or something in high school, and she was like, well, did they sleep together? And our Marshall was like, yeah. And they were like, well, how do you know? And she was like, because I know my nephews. You a little too involved for me. And it's not cute. And I'm not here for it. I'm not featuring that. Okay? Like, is she fucking him? Like, I'm trying to figure that out. Because it ain't like they look alike. Or anything's possible. So also, the last straw for Letitia was that this bitch told about the $15,000 ring. That was the last straw for her to kick uh, Aunt Marsha out. She shouldn't be there with your kids at all. She's his family, not yours. You weren't even dating this man when he was free. Like, for real? Like, you're messing up. You're screwing up, okay? And your daughters, you can't play with people like that. And honestly, since everybody don't have people that's going to actually get out of jail, I think this show needs a reunion, like, bad. Like, we, we, need, we need more, <laughs> all right, than a sentence at the end of it. All right, so here we go for the main event. <laughs> this has got to be the most bullshittest bullshit I've seen in a long time. Renika and Asante. So he's apparently been dreaming about shrimp and steak. Not Renika. He doesn't mention her when he says that. Now, granted, he may, brother may have been hungry, but I ain't seen nobody on this show just say food and not mention the person that they was going out there to see. So she was like, well, she has to go to Walmart to get a money order. Um, now that his auntie um, has wired her the money, and she was like, and this bitch said, I had to dip into my daughter's college savings to pay his bail. I said, that should never happen, like ever. And any of you who don't know about a 529, and I know about, not because I have a children, not because I have a child, but for my nieces, I do, I do have 529s for them. Um, you still, if you withdraw that money, you still have to pay federal taxes if it doesn't go to that kid. So you're still going to be taxed on money that's not going to even be used for your child's college education. It's not even like a regular savings account. So I'm not even sure. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Somebody you've never even met in person? Girl, bye. All right, so he was like, I've been uh, with her for a year, and I know how to tame her, so I knew she was going to pay my bail. I said, oh, really, bitch? Are we doing that? But then again, she is dumb. So Renika gets on the phone with the person who Apple paid her the money that she, to use for the uh, money order at Walmart to take back to the jail. There was too much going on. Then she doesn't ask who this person is until she calls them to talk to them on the phone. The person, honestly, it, and I think it may have been, like, maybe the editing, how they sometimes stretch out the voice. I actually thought it was a man. It just sounded like, um, you know, how sometimes 
gay men can have a higher pitch to their male sounding voice. That's, that's actually what it sounded like to me. And I was like, okay, well maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's just editing or whatever. Um, then she doesn't ask, yeah, okay, I said that. So the person sounded like she could have been an auntie, okay? But she asked her, she was like, are you his auntie? And he, he she, anyway, goes, no, I, I'm his girlfriend. But this was a person that said, I'm cooking food for both of y'all, but I didn't want to start until I knew he was on his way. So when y'all show up or whatever, y'all have food. So she's saying this as his girlfriend to another chick. That don't even sound right. That don't even, all none of this sounds right. Uh, you know, Renika, you are about to get played holistically on TV. And at this point, I don't know what else will wake you up. I really don't. Okay. So, Renika, not only are you stupid, but you are dragging your daughters who will be off to college in the next three to four years down with you. And that's some simple ass shit. It's some bird ass shit. So this dumb bra is still talking to herself outside that country ass jail into the night. We saw her first thing in the morning into the night. She's just outside talking. To, that's the way it looks. Okay. It does not even appear that she's talking to the camera crew. Like Renika, this is not no man worth anything is going to even want you after this. This is a bad look. Girl, cut it. Just cut it. Your price is too hot. Cut it. Okay. So she was like, um, the auntie stuff is not going to ruin their night. He's probably been using her for years to get money. I told you something was wrong with her when she was like, I don't care if he got the other chick. He ain't going to get rid of me that easily. Like, Renika, where, where is your self-esteem? Where is it? I want to help you. If not, I want to help you find it. Because I'm embarrassed for you. Because this is a bad look. Okay? Okay. So, I'm sorry. I, I told you, I think Asante's a little, little sus. Okay, and I know that sounds like a read, but it's really not. I could be wrong, but my Atlanta spider sense is tingling. And he just did not seem sexually interested enough in her. Like other men we've seen when they get out of jail. And I just make, that makes me go, hmm. It just makes me go, hmm. It just seems a stranger, especially for a man. So, um... But what I thought was nasty was the way Renika just kissed a man straight out of jail. She don't know if he was. She clearly don't even look like he took a shower in a week, okay? And I don't think that's just because of jail. He just did not look clean. All right. She, then she starts, then right after she's like kissing all over him, she calling him a jailbird. I'm like, bitch, he just got out. Dang, why are you trying to hurt his feelings? <laughs> I can't decide whose side I was on. I ain't nobody's side. Anyway, so Renika just going off like a bird, acting like this is her son. And like she's kissing one of her kids, they have no chemistry. I am just over it, girl. I'm, but I'm lying. No, I'm not over it because you know I'll be watching it next week. But anyway, I'll talk to y'all soon. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.